Well, Jordan, hello. Hello. <laughs> so you're familiar with what I do, right? Yes, yes. Okay. I enjoy I enjoy your videos. I okay. watch them pretty, anytime they pop up on my, my <laughs> news feed, I always watch them. Awesome. So we often don't talk to the cast. Yeah. And that is on purpose generally because we're so focused on the scriptural side of things that oftentimes there's just that's really our, our, what, our, where our focus is, right? Yeah. But I do love talking to you guys when I get the chance, either at premieres or when I'm on set or whatever else. So I'm really, really happy I get to talk with you today. Likewise. And I want to focus on, I want to go through your character as Little James. Mm -hmm. Some of the my audience's favorite character, a lot of the favorite that's moments are from you and what you've done from season one to season four now and into season five. And we've been looking at all of that you know, deep diving into all of it. I don't know if you saw, but I did a full video through your entire progression through season three. So I didn't just see that you one. in particular. I need to watch it, yeah. Um, so it was a really interesting kind of uh, case study, I guess, in not only how you kind of built the character, but also what your character has gone through so yeah. far. So today, what I really want to do with you is take a second and go through the life of little James. Yeah. But I don't want to do it from the beginning to end. I want to do it from the end to the beginning. Cool. And so in season four, episode seven, obviously we get a flash forward with mm -hmm. Mary Magdalene and Matthew. Yeah. And so this is a really interesting scene, not biblical, but it is, it, there are a lot of biblical things within it, right? Yeah. And so for us, it's really, really cool to see where your character ends up and how he ends up. So what are your thoughts on that ending scene overall? Yeah. Um, I remember I got a, a text from Liz and Paris when I hadn't read that, that episode yet. And um, they were telling me about the fact that they were talking about my death. And I was like, oh my gosh. So right. I had to jump forward and read it. Um, but it was... Uh, you know, for one, it was nice to know that I live another 30 years. <laughs> At so, least, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's like he's he's only halfway through his life. Right. Um, so that was that was nice that like, you know, he he has some time ahead. I loved the fact that they made him married with daughters. Right. Um, I thought that was really uh, a sweet thing, like a, a little hint that like while we all know the the really hard the, the big hardships that the apostles face and sure. the adversity and the the pain and the death and all of that but um they were still people that had a lot of you know experienced a lot of joy too that had a lot of beautiful moments uh, in life and um i like that you know the just knowing that little james finds his his partner and has mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. and gets to experience that uh was touching um and yeah, just he reading that scene, hearing that, uh, and then watching it, um, it just kind of made me think that like, I, I love Mary's reaction of, you know, well, at least he's not in pain anymore. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. um, the, the the hints that like, she says she's gonna write Onya, his, his wife, a right. letter. So it's like, oh, Mary, like, and little James are still close. Like he, she knows his wife and mm -hmm. daughters and like, there's all, all of that knowledge is, is kind of cool. And I, I it, it would be awesome to explore all of that later on in some capacity. Um, but I, uh, one of the first things I thought too was, you know, like she said, little James not being in pain anymore. I almost imagine him in those final moments of his life being at complete peace and just kind of like out of all the apostles being the one that's like, you know, this is just more physical pain. I've, right. I've had this forever. Like right. this is, that's all you've got. Like, you know, kind of <laughs> almost an eerie level of pain where like, I, I imagined the, the executioner kind right. of almost being freaked out. Like, wh why isn't he screaming? Like, why is he not, mm. you know, you know, reacting to this? And I, I think of it as like, you know, his disability and his pain kind of becomes his superpower. Right. Um, and he's at the beginnings of his journey, you know, at this point in the story, but 30 years from now, after becoming Bishop of Jerusalem and all of these big things, um, there, you know, I'm sure he's learned a lot over that time yeah. um, and uh, learned how to use this as a strength as Jesus kind of, you know, suggests to him in, in season three. Yeah, any thoughts on his death overall? I know that traditionally, I think little James is said to have been thrown off of the <laughs> precipice yes. where Jesus was actually tempted by and Satan. Then stoned. Yeah, and yeah. then he still didn't die because he's just too good. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they have to come down and like smash his head, right? Yes, yeah. <laughs> Which I, death would have you preferred? <laughs> I, so that's what I, I was 
hoping for just because that, like you said, that's the more um, widely accepted version of how mm -hmm. Little James was killed. Um, What's up? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> no worries, you're good. No worries. <laughs> um, but uh, so I, that's kind of what I, I had in mind. But I guess it would have been like with Mary being like, how did he go? Mm -hmm. It would have been a, a very morbid uh, explanation uh, with Matthew yeah. trying to explain yeah. it. So I guess that's why they did it. But um, a fun fact about Little James. So I went to um, Rome for a, a chosen trip, one of our international things, doing press and stuff. And uh, while I was there, I was given a relic of Little James. Mm. I was. It's just like a little card, and in this, and the, it's laminated. There's a little cir cutout circle, and it looks just like, um, you know, like almost dirt or a, a really thin piece of wood. And it's actually part of it, the bone fragments of Little James. Wow. Um, and the crazy thing is, the only piece of his body that that they still have that they know the whereabouts of is his right foot, which is my weaker leg and mm. my weaker foot. Um, and uh, while we were in Rome, I was with Giovanni, who plays Thaddeus, and Lada, mm. who plays Eden. Uh, we were in the in St. Peter's uh, Cathedral mm -hmm. underneath uh, in like the where, where they have uh, St. Peter's remains. And while we were there, there's all these paintings and statues of the apostles. And we saw several statues of little James and paintings where he has his staff mm -hmm. and uh, his right, he's leaning on his left leg and his right foot is on its tiptoes. Mm. And I was like, I didn't notice it at first, but Lada pointed it out. She was like, he's standing like you. Sure, yeah. And yeah. then we started seeing it in the other like interpret or like, you know, uh, paintings and statues of little James. And it could mean nothing, but it could yeah. also, you know, there, there could be something to that. But yeah. it was just such an interesting thing. So I, I definitely feel like the getting to see where his remains are, having a relic of little James, mm -hmm. um, and then all of that tied into the story that, that we, we do in episode seven where they talk about his death. It was just really moving. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's interesting feeling that much uh, feeling having that much love and kinship with someone that you know lived thousands of years before yeah. me it's it's wild yeah yeah super cool well, let's go back a little bit in time season four present day to where we are in the story so far yes you have these really cool moments throughout the entire season these little hints coming up to episode seven mm -hmm. and kind of these moments of like parts where you're in pain, parts where certain people are realizing it, certain people are ignoring it or yeah, not yeah. seeing it. Uh, and so, you know, one of those people obviously is uh, Mary Magdalene, yeah. who is very, you know, insightful in all that she does, <laughs> whether that's with, um, you know, uh, talking with Jesus or talking with any of you guys, um, yeah. seeing Matthew's pain and seeing your pain. Um, and you finally get a scene where you get to talk with Mary Magdalene in this and, um some really interesting insights. Now you bring up a song of David, a Psalm of David, where it talks about the frustrations of life, but then at the end still being willing to glorify God and yeah. go with him and do what he's asking you to do. Um, what was that scene like for you? And how do you relate to that, that moment? That scene was great. Like Liz is one of my best friends and we hadn't gotten to do a one-on-one -on -one scene yet. So that alone was really cool. Um, and the, the, relationship between Mary and th and little James um, is something that like we've all we've you know there's scenes where Mary and James are maybe not having a direct interaction but mm -hmm. they're like the group is arguing and they're they're usually kind of on the same page where they're like peacekeepers um, they listen a lot like they usually don't intervene in those big group scenes until they're like you know we need to listen to what he's telling us right. or we, I think right. we just need to take a nap like whatever they're yep. just trying to like talk sense into the the group um, so it makes and they've also been two of the first three followers so uh, I like the 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 fact that they kind of started to finally show like, hey, it, it makes sense that they would be mm -hmm. close and they're kind of like kindred spirits. Um, so yeah, I loved that scene. It, it meant so much to me, and I loved that. Um, a, a thing I was concerned about uh, whenever we we had, which we'll talk more about, but the little James and Jesus scene. I was worried that like, oh man, I don't want that to be the end of little James's story. Mm -hmm. um, so I actually went to the writers uh, after, while we were still shooting season three and um, was like, hey, what if, you know, we know little James isn't getting healed. <clears throat> so what if his condition worsens? What right. if it gets, cause that's what my grandpa had uh, basic, it was like a form of Lou Gehrig's disease. Okay. And um, you know, was one of the most loving, faithful, kind, 
people, patient people I've ever known. Mm. And um, it was frustrating watching him, his body just kind of deteriorate and shut down, but he never lost his, his positive attitude. Mm -hmm. He was always so, uh, you know, just uplifting of everyone. And I, I would love, uh, I, I was excited at the prospect of portraying a little bit of that in James, like his body's getting weaker, but his faith is growing stronger right. during all of yeah. it. Um, but also showing like that, you know, while he may understand, like he may accept the words Jesus told him, but it doesn't mean he has to like yeah. them necessarily. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's almost like if you're going through a, a breakup and some, someone dumps you, your friends could all be like, you know, it's you're going to find your person, like, <laughs> right. it's going to be okay. But you're like, no, I, like, I, I've accepted this person left me, but I don't like it. I feel like crap. I'm, yeah. I'm I, you know, I'm never going to find love again. And you have to actually live it and go through it um, to n then look back and be like, oh, okay, yeah, I see right. what they meant. Like, it was okay. Yeah. I am okay. Um, and I think little James is on that journey. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, my wife and I, we always say following Jesus is better, but it's not easy. Yeah. And just like the good, Bible yeah. talks about the narrow road, right? This is a road that's harder. It's a road that is uncomfortable, but it is right. better in the end. Yeah. 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 I like that. And I, I think that it was, it's a cool, like sweet moment where in the midst of all of this, you know, hurt and, and kind of fear that, you know, there's a lot happening and they're still grieving Rayma and, and, you know, they feel bad for their friend, like for Thomas, who's especially grieving. And, um, there's Jesus is kind of doing things and saying things he hasn't done or said before. Right, and right. there's a lot of confusion. So I liked that in the midst of all of this chaos, you get to see, um, Mary and, and little James, who are two of the more steady characters in the group kind of have like this moment of, of like, understanding in each other, but like there's some lighthearted, there's joking, mm -hmm. there's like, you see the the love all of these characters have for each other too. Um, and that kind of stuff is is very much needed in the show, especially yeah. as we, you know, continue to go down this, this path. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, let's jump back, season two. Um, obviously a massive season for your character and, yeah. and even for you in a lot of ways of connecting with those moments. Um, I've seen a lot of interviews about you talking about this, but will you give us a brief kind of overview yeah. about um, what you've been going through and what, you, what you've been through your entire life? Um, I know some of my yeah. audience, know, most of my audience will know, yeah, but yeah. some of them I think are, are catching up. So. Yeah, the, I mean, the cliff notes are basically that I was born two months premature. Is this me personally? Or yeah, little? yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. You're, so you're, I, was, I was born two months premature, um, I, which led to cerebral palsy and scoliosis uh, and underwent a bunch of surgeries, was always in and out of the hospital. Um, because of that, I couldn't play sports as a young kid, so I found acting and started doing community theater. Um, I played Tiny Tim, was my very first role, and uh, fell in love with acting. Mm -hmm. And then it kind of turned into like, once it became my career focus in my teens, I was like, this is, I'm just diving head first. Right. Um, I, I was met with some resistance in the film and television world. Theater, it was fine. Um, I always felt included. It was like this community and yeah. the camaraderie. Uh, and then in film and television, there's a lot of it is like, you know, um, uh, the way that like a lot of it is optics and like they have a certain type in mind and like uh, there's body image uh, stuff like where they're you know telling my sister was 12 acting too and they were mm -hmm. like telling her to lose weight and clear up her wow. acne and like it's like we're kids like that's yeah. we're kids mm -hmm. um, and uh, so there's a lot of there it's gotten better but especially then um, they, there was just very specific body types you had to have mm. um, in order to like kind of gain traction so then once I was met with that resistance and was was um, being told that like I had to tone the limp down or try to lose a limp, it became this thing where I, I had resentment for, for my disability. I didn't ever consider myself or want to call myself a member of the disabled community because mm -hmm. it's like, no, that's a bad thing. Like, mm -hmm. um, and I, you know, was, was just really uh, frustrated with the fact that like, I felt like there was this curse um, that was preventing me from realizing the potential of this gift that I was given for acting. So I, I didn't know what was going to happen. I felt stuck. And then The Chosen came along and um, season two is where, you know, Dallas and our writers decided to embrace that. Yeah. Because I already had season one written when I was cast. So we right. didn't mention it then. Um, but then season two, we, we made it part of the character and 
um, it was liberating. For the first time, I could play a character and I didn't have to focus on not limping. I was right. just like, oh, I can just be me and be present. And Which is probably super hard to relearn. Yeah, like, yeah. 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 It's so, you feel self-conscious. You feel like, you know, it's something that like uh, every day, every moment I, uh, b prior to that, it, my focus was trying not to limp, even in public, like not wanting people to look at it or notice it or mm -hmm. ask about mm -hmm. it. And when they did, it felt like, you know, no, normally it was harmless. Like most people weren't asking in a negative way, but it was just like, oh man, they saw the thing that I hate about right, myself. Right. Um, and then in The Chosen getting to like, uh, you know, lean into that, um, pun intended. Yeah. I, uh, it really was the biggest blessing because it, it freed me of that. Um, and I still have insecurities about it. There's still moments where I'm like, I revert back to that. Mm. Um, but I now see the beauty in it too. And I see the impact that it's had on myself and on other people within the disabled community or even out, everyone feels different. Everyone has insecurity. So even outside of the disabled community, little James's story has, you know, helped people feel more comfortable in their own skin and, and be a little kinder to themselves, I feel like. So right. um, it's been such a blessing to be able to, to be a little part of that. Yeah, yeah, super interesting. Um, so let's talk about season three and, and the scene that you have with Jonathan, yeah. where you're talking about, um, you're asking Jesus to heal you and he says no, right? Yeah. Um, how is little James processing through that at the moment? Yeah, it's it. so the scene right before that when he tells us he's sending us out two by two and that right. we're gonna heal. Yeah, um, you almost seem angry in that. Scene. Yeah. yeah, and I wasn't anticipating that. I was just listening as little James, and specifically when he said um, he's talking to Z and Matthew, mm -hmm. and he goes, "None of you are what you were." Mm -hmm. I got angry as James on behalf of James, and I was like, "No, they, they, he may not be a zealot, he may not be a tax collector anymore, but I'm still me. Right? Uh, like, my thing hasn't changed." Um, and I was feeling angry, and like, uh, the it, it felt I was feeling misunderstood and um, forgotten. Like, mm. you know, like what, what, what have I not done right? I've been here from the beginning. Um, I'm not asking to sit on your left and right hand, like or side. I'm not like trying, I don't want glory, I don't want any of that. Um, but it's like, what have I done wrong? Why have I not been worthy of, of being healed when you heal strangers? And, and uh, so going into that scene, I'm glad we shot that one first because mm -hmm. it informed my mindset going into the scene with Jesus, which sure. was kind of anger, like where little James is usually very soft-spoken and mm -hmm. non-confrontational. But in that one, he kind of comes in a little bit like, uh, you know, bolder than he normally would. And um, it was interesting, you know, like feeling the the letdown initially of him, like saying, yeah, but what if I don't heal you? And um, kind of like the desperation of like, yeah, but like I'd have this story. I could tell people that you healed me. And like, he's like, yeah, but a lot of people already have that story. Mm -hmm, so it's mm -hmm. like you see little James kind of go through these different stages of, of grief in that moment. Um, and that was just such a... a powerful scene for me where I, all I had to do was be present and be with Jonathan, like in that one in particular, because it's all things I've felt, it's all things I've wondered. Mm -hmm. And um, I knew the importance of the scene, I knew the impact of it, uh, because I, faith and healing is such a complicated, uh, you know, topic. Um, and those two things, th there's been a lot of, of pain inflicted on, on the disabled community um, within their their systems of faith because right. it's like there's the idea that you, you've sinned or your parents sinned yeah. or like you, that you haven't you prayed have hard faith. enough. Or, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I've even since that scene, I've had people that, that didn't like it that have mm -hmm. come up and um, without asking just prayed over my leg or back yep. to straighten or yep. my leg to grow. Yep. And I, I appreciate the, the sentiment behind it, but I think that it's often misinformed and, and, yeah. and it well, comes, I'll, I'll tell you from my point yeah. of view, it's unbiblical. I, yeah, yeah, I agree. And yeah. I think that a lot of it is, um, there's a, there's a bit of privilege in, um, in that because it's like it, when you, um, basically, uh, you know, having people see that and they're like, I, the, the show and the character has helped transform my view of myself. Yeah. Um, where I, I love this about myself. I love 
the body I've been given, it, it hurts sometimes. It's tiring. It's, it's, I can't tie my right shoe because of all the metal in my body. Mm. But it's like, it's made me who I am. It's made me the dad I am, the husband I am, the actor I am. And I wouldn't change it. Um, I would have a few years ago, but not right. after this storyline. Right. Um, but then there's a bit of privilege for someone to be like, Oh no! You you do need to change that still. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, who says I need yeah. healing? Like yeah. I'm I got the healing I needed, and yeah. um, I'm I'm grateful, you know, for all of those hardships. So um, I think that there's there's good intentions behind it, um, but I think that you know. I'm glad that we were able to address it in the show to kind of give a voice for the disabled community and let them know that like you do have a place and yeah. like you do belong not in spite of your your disability but you can use that you yeah. can um, inspire people with it and uh, little James has inspired me to to try to do that in my own personal life yeah then finally we'll go all the way back to season one yes you started this show from the very beginning. Episode two, you come in, obviously, with Giovanni um, yeah. as part of the Shabbat episode. Um, and we don't know much about your character from previous. However, this season, we will see more. Yes. And so we know that there's a couple of different moments that we're going to go flash back to where you were in the beginning, maybe seeing some of those moments. Um, we've seen two things in particular from an outside view, looking in yeah. at social media and different things. One of the scenes is you're in the temple and you're looking up at a choir yes. uh, that is singing a song that you sang, obviously, during Hanukkah yeah. in season four. Um, I was really sad that they didn't bring back the original song that you sang. I know. Uh, it would have been fun to, to see that there. Yeah, or if yeah. they are going to bring it back, another point would be cool. Who knows, yeah. Um, and then, obviously, we've seen another point of a flashback of you, younger version of you, mm -hmm. um, within a choir. Maybe you're trying out. Maybe something else is happening yeah. there. Um, what are your thoughts on James' earlier years and, and maybe who he was before he met Jesus and what's what's kind of going on yeah. there in terms of that and maybe into season one a little bit. One thing, I, I had never talked to the writers about this, but um, they kind of, I think we're on the same page where I, little James, he is like, he's meek. He's, he's you know, one of, he's timid. He's soft-spoken. He, he's not um, quick to speak. But uh, I think being a character that, disability aside, just being a smaller guy, um, having, but then especially considering his disability, he would have to be pretty thick skinned and pretty mm. tough to make it and to um, deal with the, like, the bullying, the, the people that viewed him as unworthy, that mm. um, didn't think that, you know, thought he sent her, his parents sent her, that he didn't have enough faith or whatever it is, um, as, as, damaging as some of that stuff has been to people today it was probably tenfold back then mm. and um could even lead to death way more often yeah than, yeah. yeah and yeah. uh i i think that um he'd have to be you know have some fire to him yeah um and i i've you see a bit of that even in season four when during the stoning where the three people that fight the pharisees yeah. off are james and the two simons yeah, where I love it. it's like james would little james would be the last person you would expect yeah. in that but he's like right there and um i loved that they put that in the script and um when you see a little bit of james uh his backstory i think you'll see a bit of of fire like where there's you'll you'll see a little bit of like the you know that toughness he would have needed to survive right um and i feel like a lot of the you know slow to speak uh qualities of his are learned behaviors once right. he met jesus uh, okay. um and then you see a little bit of it pop up here and there but um yeah i'm, I'm so excited to to explore that and the idea that um you know, season one, little James, we didn't focus on the disability. I was tr actively trying not to limp because right. I didn't know where we were going with the story. Um, and it was even by accident. They asked one day, they're like, hey, does anyone want a walking stick for this scene? And mm -hmm. I was like, I'll take one. And I was the only one that took one. And it became a state like it, it works now. Yeah. Um, so it was interesting going back, like the way I make sense of it now, because I was trying not to limp then. Um, but I, I view it as like little James would have likely been trying not to as well right. for his own safety. Um, and then also, uh, you know, it makes sense that it's gotten more prominent as we've gone on because naturally it would, you know, there's no modern medicine. He can't go to the spa and get like a, a like a medical massage or anything right, like there's, right. he can't get a, a metal put in his hip or his back like I have. Um, so it's, it's been really, it'll be inter interesting for fans to see James, you know, a little further back and, yeah. and see how far he's come in, yeah. in this time. That's one of the things I love most about the show is just the perspective that we're given yeah. from 
the the growth of these characters and yeah. um, and to see that. So man, I'm super excited for season five. Super nice. excited for what you've got in store for us uh, for little James. And uh, I know my my Patreon people were asking uh, just to tell you basically, hey, they pray for you all the time as part of their prayer lot. groups and things like that. And they really love what you do. So I, I really thank appreciate your work and uh, and everything that you've done for the show and, and what you, you're man. doing. So, Likewise, thank yeah. you for everything you're doing. I, I love it, yeah. your analysis. We've even talked about it as a cast. We're like, <laughs> man, how does he figure this stuff out? Um, where it's it's great. We're we we're all big fans of yours as well. So awesome. thank you, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Of course. And I'll get on to Giovanni for oh my for uh, <laughs> dropping out last minute. No, it's all good. It's all good. No, I'm gonna tell him you're so. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs>